Okay, let's start. <clears throat> so first, I hope you are checking the the notes and are trying to do the things I'm doing here by yourself. Otherwise, you're going to get uh, it's going to get on the pipeline, okay? And you have to some sometime um, get to do it, okay? And that's also that's a way to learn. One thing is that I explain here. Maybe it sounds clear. Maybe not so clear. But maybe you don't care. Or, but you know, that's how we create uh, learning. That um, not only you trust in what I tell you here, but you go and do it yourself just to check and try if you understand. Okay, that's where you make. Uh, that's where you try to consolidate the learning. Okay, so uh, let's make a. Just a, a brief last last week, um, last week last last Monday. This Monday was mo mostly about networks. Okay, I have a problem. These these two classes are too spread on the week, so I think always is like, um, you know, I'm I'm in a I'm in a different week. So we talk about um, networks, and that's the most general case okay, where I cannot say that for example in the case of Snow White we had one very clear advantage okay that we said all wells are the same all pipelines are symmetric so I can just look at that was quite some time ago okay where is the Snow White okay diagram <coughs> well wow, further away okay so we said we have this complicated system all wells if I change something here in principle should affect the well here okay? because all of them are joined by that point when you have some common points where they are merging or they are connecting it makes a dependence in temperature pressure and rate okay? that it affects everyone it's like everyone is part of the same community if this one is polluting something then this one is going to feel it okay but we said all of them are identical I'm operating in the same way all of them have the same productivity all of them have the same number of wells per template the templates are symmetric they have the same length they have the same which is not the general case okay but we are doing that just to get like warming up on on like on the exercise okay and also when you're in an early field development early stage of field development that is most likely the case you don't have information of every particular place in the reservoir you you cannot you don't have enough information to make an an elegant assumption or a relevant assumption of how different these wells are going to be okay so you assume all of them are the same okay now when we go to networks that's a bit more the general case and remember networks only exist if i have some this collecting structure okay if i have if I have all wells separately, I have many wells, but they go separately to separator, or they are very close to the separator, like in that case, you actually don't have a network. Okay? They don't, there is almost no dependence between them uh, with, with regards of uh, rate and pressure. Okay? But in, in, the, in many fields, in the Gulf of Mexico, offshore Africa, Norwegian continental shelf, actually, you cannot make, due to the water depth, Okay, you cannot make a platform with this is called dry wellheads. Okay? You need to have some sort of a subsea system because that's kind of the most cost um, cost effective. Can, and then you have to gather the production of all of these wells to with one pipe or one unique line to to this FPSO, okay, to the separator. And that's where these problems occur. That you have this merge of wells might look something like that. Okay. that they are starting to compete between them you maybe have a strong well you maybe have a weak well you maybe have a well that has some plugging issues that is not producing as much as it should okay maybe even some of these wells it's um, it's actually maybe even if you don't have like a, um, check valve okay, if you don't have the atilvake schlagsventil it might be that one of the wells is eating production okay? because one is too strong the other is too weak and then simply it doesn't produce just there but it produces also to to um, to one of the weak wells okay? so then we said at least I wanted you to get the image of 
Mathematically, it means that we are solving a system of equations, okay? And in reality, we have a much complex system of equations. In our case, it's dry gas, okay? So we can make some assumptions. And we just counted that you always have to have the same of number of equations and the same number of unknowns, okay? And then we had this example. We made it graphically. We had the curves, okay? What do they mean? The available pressure and the required pressure, okay? Remember, available, you always compute from, you go with the flow, you go in the same direction. So you go from a constant pressure boundary, which in this case is reservoir, and you go to the place where you want to calculate the pressure, okay? That's how you compute that curve. And if you see, it looks like an IPR, but in this case, this IPR contains the IPR and also contains the tubing flow. And if I had even a pipe, then it will contain also the pipe flow, okay? <clears throat> and also the required pressure, which is the pressure I need here that I move counter current, okay? And then I say, what pressure do I need here to flow this rate against this pressure? Okay, and it looks like that. So then you had different, so the curves, I gave you these three, that was actually a uh, an exercise uh, in one of the exams, I think in 2008, 18. And uh, you solve it, there were different ways, I gave you some recommendation, but it's actually trial and error. Okay? And uh, the thing is that you have to be careful which variable you have to use to iterate. Okay? I told you, if you use p-junction, if you use the two rates, q1, q2, you have to iterate with two variables. And then it becomes dif difficult, which one should I increase and which one should I decrease for the next step, okay? While if you iterate with p-junction, then you have just one variable and you can just move it up and down until you reach a solution, okay? And this one, which is just something, I think it just helps you, I think it, at, at least it helps to me, okay? I hope it helps you, but simply to consolidate the knowledge that Network, I might have some combination, rate combination, that they are feasible, okay? My reservoir guys, they want to produce some combination. It might be here. Then I say, yes, we can achieve by choking. But it might be here, outside. And then I say, no, I cannot, okay? And then they start to argue, well, can you add artificial leaf? Can we do something, change tubing size? And then you have to see, how do you change these areas, okay? When we have a complex network, many wells, then you can make multiple dimensions and then it doesn't look like that anymore, okay, this area. So it's just for the simple case of two wells that you see you have a feasible region and then you have an unfeasible region. Okay? And this feasible region with depletion simply will become smaller and smaller. That means that you cannot produce every rate but all the time you can produce less and less and less. Okay, so our goal for today is um, we're going to solve it in Excel, okay? Um, and there are many ways to, to do it, but I'm going to show you just one way. Uh, then we're going to have, we're going to include a choke, okay? And then we're going to solve it with the choke. Uh, and then we're going, going to make some s uh, short comments on downhole networks. We can also have networks on the same well, okay? That this technique is useful for solving that case. And let's see how far we go from there, okay? Um, so I have decided, last year I just did it um, just with, you know, I made the Excel table here, and then I was showing you what to, you know, how to solve it, what to, how to fill it, okay? But I think now I will use the Excel sheet, okay? But you have to promise, okay, I do it here, and maybe do mistakes or not, you help me, but you have to do it at home, okay? Even if it's boring, okay? Because then maybe comes in three weeks, you have to do the exercise, and, and then, you know, you don't remember what Milan was uh, was doing, okay? Uh, so I have uploaded this file, Network to Gas Wells, okay? It's on the website. Where is my website? <coughs> Ok, 
Okay, it's under courses, this year course, and then you have class files, and it's here. So any of you who wants to kind of follow, um, or, but I told you, you take the video and you try to reproduce it at home, and also try to understand it by yourself, okay? But instead of doing it just a sketch and then trying to tell you what to do, simply I'm going to do it here. And uh, yeah, and hopefully you have a similar exercise in the exercise set. Okay. So let's see. Okay, so let's see what we have. We have a system of, yeah, I don't have, um, I don't have a um, diagram, but it's basically the same diagram that we had last time. Okay, a, a system where we have two wells, we have a flow line now here, it's not, the junction is not very close, but it's a bit far away. So you have a flow line, and uh, um, for now we are going to assume fully open choke. Okay, then we're going to remove that, that assumption. Yes. Um, so here you see for each well you have reservoir pressure. They are producing from the same layer. They have a slightly different productivity. Okay, 52 and 40. Different N also. Uh, that's the tubing flow also is a slightly different. Maybe they are one is a bit deeper than the other maybe the diameter is, is slightly different. So the elevation coefficient and the CT is different. Then you have a flow line for each well that goes from the wellhead or after the choke all the way to a common point. And here you have the common point, the flow line. And finally you end up in the separator. Okay? So just to be clear, what we are solving here is we have two wells and we have dry gas we are working now with all of with dry gas. We have a choke, we have a long flow line. Or and then we have here the separator. And um, that's what we call well one, well two. And simply the first case we are going to make is open <coughs> choke. Okay, because in the last example was just for you to understand how to solve it graphically. You had these curves, okay, but in the real case you don't have these curves. Actually, you have the equations for uh, the performance equations for each uh, for each element. Okay. So. Um, What should we do first? Any ideas to solve? We put the system together and we want to see how much well one and well two will produce. What have we done in the Snow White case? We have to assume something, either rate or speed of well. Uh -huh. Remember, in the Snow White case, we said, well, we assume the rate, right? And then we go calculate everything. And at the end, we saw the delta P of the choke, mm -hmm. right? If it was positive, that means we are in plateau, okay? Or if not, we try to make it change the rate until it becomes zero. So we have to assume something, okay, like a starting point. Now, when you're solving networks, there is a problem with assuming rate, okay? Rate... Um, So we either have to assume Q1 and Q2, okay, or we have to assume PWF1 and PWF2, for example, right? Now, we are going, I'm going to choose here to assume this guy, okay, the pressure. And why is that? Because I when I put this system together, I have no idea how much this rate might be, okay, this Q1 and Q2. Might be something very big, might be an offshore well, might be a non-shore well, very small. I don't know, but the pressure, I know this pressure is bounded between 
between what? This pressure, I know that PWF has to be less than P reservoir, right? So it's like, I know the upper bound of this variable. And the rate, I don't know, have no idea. If it can be a 3 million, can be a 2 million, 1 million, half a million, I don't know, right? So it might be that the number that I choose is, is not a good number. And then I get issues because you remember the IPR equation that was CR PWF squared PW to the power of n. Okay. If here I'm assuming pressure, simply I know well it has to be less than that pressure. And then the rate can be either zero or something very big. Okay? But if I'm iterating with this equation, <coughs> right? If the Q that I assume is too big, then I will have a problem evaluating this expression. Okay? And it might take me some time to find just the upper bound of Q. Okay? So for that reason, I'm going to choose PWF and what value should we recording what value should we put let's try maybe something with 80 okay we know that value we have to iterate but let's say 80 okay has to be less than pr now i say q well will be ipr remember that equation i have two iprs essentially ipr QG giving me the rate and I say that should be the deliverable coefficient of well 1, the N of well 1, reservoir pressure of well 1 and then bottom hole pressure. Do I lock it or not? Any of these cells? Okay, no, Arpita says because we one simply to drag the same equation down here and then it should take this PR, this C, and this N, and this PW. Okay? Okay, so it says now you have some idea on the magnitude. These are very small wells. Okay, it's not an offshore well which produce maybe one million, three million, it's not. Okay, it's, it's something 68,000. So it's a, maybe a small onshore <coughs> gas well. Okay? Maybe a rich uncle in the US ask you to make this calculation. Okay, how much can I produce? That has a few wells, this this uncle. Okay, so after that I have PWF, I have Q. What is next? First, something we didn't say, right? We have to what have we done in Snow White? We took an equilibrium point, right? We define an equilibrium point, which was the choke in this case. What is going to be our equilibrium point in, in this case? Yeah, but the choke is fully open, so we are going to neglect it for now, right? We will go back to that case. Wellhead, but will it be wellhead of one or wellhead of two? I have two wellheads. Remember that the logic that we have done in Snow White, we said we define that point, and then we go co-current, and then we go counter-current to that point, right? So it, it sounds a bit strange that I have to, from separator, go here, and from well one, go here, for example, okay? A most natural point, I think, is the junction, okay? To define the junction has my equilibrium point. Because that's where I say, well, the pressure here has to be the same from this side, has to be the same from this side, and has to be the same from this side. Okay? You have s several infinite ways to solve networks. Okay? I'm just showing you like a way I, I like to I like to use. Okay? But essentially, you can use any method you want, as long as you get the right result. Okay? Wellhead pressure. What equation do I use here? Okay, we have the tubing equation, right? We have to take flow in tubing. And what pressure do we need? The pressure in or the pressure out? Out, okay? So we have P1 is upstream, 
P2 is downstream, so we need tubing P2. Tubing P2. Yeah. A tubing coefficient, I don't fr freeze it because of the same reason. S P1, PWF, and the rate is this rate. 74, not much from 80, because you don't have that much pressure drop. What is the next step? So I am now, you see my drawing, I came from reservoir here, and then I came from here up. Also reservoir here, bottom hole, and then bottom hole up. And now I say fully open choke, I have to move from here to here with flow line equation, okay? And also from here to here, okay? So there I use the equation line, and then I have P1 and P2, I want to have P2, okay? P junction, line, P2, and line, this is our horizontal line also, flow line, I have it here. The rate, the pressure, the wellhead pressure, that's the starting pressure, and then the rate is the same well rate. Okay, no no change in pressure. It's a very big flow line. Here you have some uh, kind of a bigger drop. What is the next step? Now I have to find from scene from the separator, right? I found well from from well one, from well two, and then I have to go from separator uh, to junction. Okay, for that I need the rate. Remember the rate I have here is the Q of the field is Q one plus Q two. Okay. So then I say here this Q I will have this guy plus this guy. Then I say the junction pressure will be, what equation do I use here? The junction pressure seen from the separator, the required pressure at the junction. Okay, line P1, all of you agree? Yeah, you're not saying yes just to line, line P1. flow line coefficient you see is much bigger because the diameter probably is much bigger pressure tool that's the pressure at the end of the pipe downstream of the pipe that separator pressure and then the Q should be the rate circulating through this pipe which is the rate of both well 1 and well 2 okay. so here you see a problem <coughs> According to the separator, according to seen from the separator, this pressure should be 30. According to well 1, that pressure should be 74. And according to well 2, that pressure should be 75. Okay, so they don't match. I have to make them match. That means that this guy, this PWF that I assumed, is actually too high, right? I need to increase the rate. So if I will make, for example, 50, and then also here maybe 50 you see they become closer so that means the PWF I assume maybe let's try with 40 40 okay then it become closer and closer I know the rate should be around 100,000 and 48,000 and the PWF should be around or less than 40 right so how do I tell it now Excel a machine how to solve that automatically I don't want to do it manually How do I how do I do it? Okay, Excel is usually limited that it needs to have just one cell that it wants to drive to a value, either maximum to a value or to zero. Okay, this goal seek for example, it likes to have just one cell, and the thing is that here we have three cells. Okay, so a way to compound all of that in one cell, I'm going to make a special trick. Okay, I'm going to first calculate the average of all of these pressures 
and I, I again I you can do it many different ways average and then I calculate the error will be this pressure minus this pressure the average okay and that I block because I want all of them to be subtract subtracted from the average okay squared okay so I'm calculating I have an average pressure and I'm calculating the difference between the pressure seen from well one from well two and from separator minus that pressure okay So the error here is like 10, 0.1, and uh, yeah, 9. Okay. And then I can say the sum of all of these errors is, is to 20, okay, around 20. And the idea is that this cell I can now minimize, right? And if I minimize this, this sum of errors, then I'm actually making all of them the same, right? It's simply a way to solve it. So I calculate an average, then I say the difference of each pressure with the average squared, and then I sum all of these errors. Okay, and then I end up just with one cell. Okay. Why do I square them? It might be if I don't square them, might be that here will be positive sign and the other will be a negative sign. So they cancel each other. So when this one indicates zero, it might not be zero. It might be that one is negative and one is positive. So that's a technique, simply squaring some of errors that allows me to avoid issues with if one is negative or one is positive. Okay? Then I'm making sure all of them are driven to zero. Okay? Next step, tell the computer, right? Computer, please drive this error to zero by changing these two guys. Yes? You can do, people all over the years have told me, oh, there is a better way, or you can do this, you can do that. That's fine. Do it the best way you understand it, but it has to give you the same result. Okay? Some people say, well, I just put the system of equation in MATLAB and then I find the result. That's also fine. Okay? For that, we're going to use... Um, so the problem with goal seek that we discussed um, earlier is that it, it, it has only one objective and it has only one cell. Okay? So what we need, actually, is we, ha we need to put two cells. So there is another tool which is more advanced than Goldseek called Solver is actually from is, is not Microsoft buys it from a company called Frontline okay so these guys are masters in optimization if you go to the website Frontline okay, these are the guys that that make the Solver for example okay and they use it is used everywhere, very powerful, they have all kind of plugins, they have all kind of advanced versions, and it's really a very nice product you have in, in, in Excel, okay? I hope they never take it away. Okay, to activate, you might not have that under data, might not have it there, so you have to go to File, um, I think Options, then you go to Add-ins, then you go here to go and then you just have to have this button ticked okay the solver okay just once again file options add-ins and then go and you select the solver okay in case you don't have it activated by default solver it's cheating already has some some things here so I'm saying this cell now it's one cell I did what I had okay I had to put all all of these that they are the same I put all of them under the same package under one cell okay please drive it to should I drive it to zero or to minimum is the same right to zero or to minimum in this case expression which is square the smallest value it can have 
is zero, right? Changing these two guys, okay, let's see, I7, I8, and then it helps because the solver will be guessing these two numbers, okay, will be start to guess. So you have to help, for example, don't try a very high number, don't try 4,000. We know it will fail, okay, for a value. So I just put here one additional constraint or help to the solver that I'm saying these two should be less or equal than reservoir pressure. Don't try, don't even try to guess values higher than 120. Okay, you will get into to trouble. Solve. Okay. Neither you reach all of them are the same. And that's the final solution. Okay. Do you think you will be able to reproduce it? Yeah? Okay. Good to hear. Let's take a picture of the solver. Now, what happens with, let's just do one more test. What happens with depletion, okay? Let's say now we are at different stage. Now, now the pressure has been reduced to 80, okay, in, in that layer, okay? You see we don't have, is they are not equal anymore. Okay, so you simply solve, you just go back, what was the rate we had before? 100,000 for well one and 50,000 for well two. So what we should expect that point to be simply reduced. Okay, I can produce less if I put that system together. Okay, so 80, 80, then solver, solve. Okay, and now one produced 50,000 and 25,000. You see actually it was reduced uh, by half okay, the, the, the production. Okay, now let's see what do I do with okay with choke. Okay, let's see the case with choke. Okay, now I want to include the choke in the system. So what have we done in um, in uh, the Snow White case? Okay, we just calculated we had our choke. Okay, then we have uh, plem, and then we have separator. So we have to go first. I fix the rate that I want. Okay, Q of the well one. Then I come all the way here. Okay. And then from the separator, I move with that rate all the way here. And then I verify that the delta P is greater than zero. Then Q1 is feasible. Okay. If delta P is less than zero, then Q1 is not feasible. Okay. You remember that's what we have done, right? Okay, so let's do it that way. Okay, dissolve this network now with two different wells. Let's solve it that way. But that's not the way I told you that commercial software is working. Okay, so we are going to do it first this way, and then we do it the way commercial software is doing it. Okay, 
So let's say first that Q1, we want it to be how much? We know that the maximum rate we found was 100,000. Okay, so let's say we want to produce 80,000. Okay, came from God, we say, came from reservoir engineer, we say they are God, so they say, they tell us, please produce Q1. They, they are smart, they know what they are doing, they told me produce this, I trust, produce this. Okay, Q2, let's say maybe 40,000. Yeah? Okay, so let's, let's take on another sheet uh, and make that case. What do I have to do now? Yes, and now I fix the rate because I know that's the rate I want, okay? Someone told me I have to produce this rate. So it's uh, 80 e to the 3, right? And then the other one was uh, 40 e to the 3. And this now should be, I like to put the um, kind of input variables with red. PWF. IPR, what do I need? Pressure, right? And here I need CR and reservoir pressure and Q, which is here. Oh. And this should be in blue because I like to say calculated variable should be in blue. Now I move up to the choke, okay? I have to find, in this case, because I'm fixing both rates, okay, I have to move from this guy up to here, from this guy up to here, and then with those rates I go back and I find pressure required here and pressure required here, okay? Exactly what we have done in Snow White, but now we are fixing two rates. Okay, PWH, it's a uh, tubing, P2, CT, S, P1, is this PWF, right? And Q, is this Q? So that means the available pressure at the wellhead is 63. If the required pressure downstream of the choke is less than that, I'm done, fi finish. So that's, I will be able to produce that rate. Okay, if not, I have to reduce the rate. So now we move from, from separator all the way here, P junction, right? And then I move from here back to these two. So first I have to calculate the sum of these two guys. Okay. Then I say the pressure at the junction is uh what will that be? Line P1 or P2? P1. Okay. I want the pressure entering into the pipeline. What do I need here? flow line, P separator, and the total rate of the flow line. So far it looks good, right? I need 30. The junction from the other two, these are no longer relevant, right? Because I just have one unique pressure at the junction. But now I have, let's make it, to make it nicer, I will say this cell is equal to this cell, and also this cell is equal to the bottom cell. Pressure downstream the choke, how do I calculate that pressure? Now I'm moving from here all the way to here, from here all the way here. What equation do I use? Line 
P2, sure? P1. It's a, always a confusion, right? <laughs> what do I want? The pressure at the inlet of the flow line, right? If you look at this drawing, <laughs> I want this pressure, right? How is it flowing this conduit? It's on this direction, right? So what is one and what is two? One. This will be one yeah. and this will yeah. be two, right? So I have this guy and I need P1, okay? Always look at the flow. First look at the section you are want to study and then look at how the flow is going and then you have your P1 and P2. Cubing, formation, everything, always look at the flow direction. Okay, so line <coughs> P1, flow line, which is here, P2 will be P junction. That's why I wanted to make it equal, such that each one has its own junction pressure. <coughs> and the rate, which rate is that? The rate of the well, right? Because the well is, the flow line is only taking the production of each well. Something happened. Okay, let's try one more. I think it got impatient that we were taking so long. Flow line P two is um, P junction, Q is the Q of the wheel, 31, then this guy is 30, okay, almost no pressure drop on that line, and then delta P of the choke, well head pressure available minus required, okay, and this should be also in blue. Will I be able to produce those rates? What do I tell the reservoir engineer? Yes, okay, you are able to produce that rate. Okay, if I try, for example, to increase 50, like the numbers we had before, 50 and 100. Okay, you see here, this rate I'm able to produce, but not this rate. Okay, so this one I should maybe lower it and then I can produce these two rates. Okay, you see if I change now, I use any combination below that point, if you remember the chart from last class, any other combination, for example, I try here to have 30, and here I try to have uh, 60, okay, S uh, 60, 40, okay, I will have now what delta P choke I have to put. More or less clear? Okay. Now we go to the next step. Now we take a break first, such that you wake up, okay? Because I see some of you are struggling to, to uh, but now we're going to do it like the commercial software is doing, okay? That I told you, the commercial software takes a choke opening or takes a choke delta P, and then it computes what rates do you have. And then you have a layer on top of it. Let's find the drawing. Okay, if you remember, uh, quite a few classes ago I told you that, so I hope you still have it on your memory. Okay, it, it works, in reality it works like that, okay? You have a solver, and then you send system parameters, reservoir pressure, choke opening, okay? And then it tells you the rate. And then simply you have to put some kind of solver another solver to say change the opening until these rates are the same that you want okay that these rates that that you desire so we're going to do that and uh, and then with that we kind of finish with uh, with uh, with the network topic okay but first let's take a break 15 minutes back online we lost some uh, short discussion. Okay, P 
P2, okay, we are calculating downstream of the line. What is the order here? Flow line P entering is the P downstream of the choke, and the Q is Q of the well. Okay, and then I do the same here. What do I need to do now? P junction, P -junction from separator. Yes. So here I say first calculate total rate sum of these two guys. Right? And then the P of the junction will be line P one, okay? Of flow line uh, P two will be separator pressure and the rate will be this guy. Now I have to make all of them the same, right? I have to sell the solver. Now this one take it to zero. Okay, so I say the average. Now I calculate this error. That will be this guy minus this guy. I have to fr freeze it. Remember, it will be common for all of them. Squared. all of them and then I say well all of these if you drive them to zero then that means that all of them are equal okay shouldn't be to 10 but should be to 9 push 9 okay what do I do now solver okay solver solver we use a computer for things that we don't want to do ourselves. Drive that value to a minimum by changing what? The PWF, right? And subject to the constraint that the PWF cannot be uh, greater than PW. So we got an error. <coughs> 12, 7. Let's change a bit more the initial seed, okay? Let's give a better approximation, 40 and 40. Okay, now they're a bit closer. It is very sensitive to the initial condition. Okay, and I converged. Okay? So, if I put a delta P choke in well 1 and delta P choke in well 2, then, or 5 in well 2, then I will get a rate of close to 100,000 and close to 48,000. Should we try to increase the delta P of the choke? <coughs> okay, that's the solution. Okay, and um, just remember when we are solving, this is like a Newton Newton Raphson method. Okay, if we want to solve a function x that has like a shape like this, for example, okay, uh, we want to find that point f x star equals zero, right? So we have to use an initial seed. Okay, so what it does, it you have this x zero finds the derivative at that point, right, and then shoots. When that will that be zero? Okay, that will be step one. Let's call it here step one. Okay, then again I repeat step two. I have the derivative, then it's going to close here. That will be step three, step two, and so forth. Right? It will simply try, and that is a very efficient and very um, quick method to solve system of equations, right? But what happens if that function has a strange shape, okay? Like usually is the case with networks, okay? If it has, for example, something like that, okay? And your initial seed is someplace here, your x0, okay? When you calculate the derivative, it might be that it's shooting at a place where the function is not defined, okay? And you get this value error. So that's why newton raphson is very efficient, but you need to have a good initial seed. So GAP, PROSPER, they made a way that you don't have that problem. 
they used maybe some sort of Newton Raphson, but they made like a way that you, the initial condition, you will never have that problem. Okay? But be aware that that's, if, if you are liking to numerical methods, mathematics, that's fascinating just to find how to find a way to give initial conditions such that they always converge. You always find convergence. Okay? In our case, we do it with Excel, so we struggle uh, sometimes. So this is a problem. So you have to provide four derivative base <coughs> solver. Okay, it is necessary to give a good initial seed. Okay, and that's a whole field of itself. So we are not going to talk too much. Simply, if you don't get convergence, just try different numbers. Okay, but here you saw we found uh, convergence. P junction is the same, seen from every place. You know, you find some rates that are, of course, less than the equilibrium rate, right? If I put here zero, I should find the equilibrium rate, right? Hopefully, the same. I was 102, 495. Is this the, okay, yeah, the pressure is different. Say, so, oh, the, the theory doesn't work. I have to retire. Okay, 102 and 495. Okay, that happens because I'm doing it live with you, okay? I'm taking the risk. So then it might not work, and then I'm into trouble, and I start sweating, and then, uh, because you're all looking at me, waiting for an answer, right? F waiting for it to work. So, so let's see, for example, for a higher, let's say we try with five and five. Okay, let's see how, what do we get? Okay, we get that the rate is being reduced, and let's try, for example, with 20 and 20, and now the rate will sh hopefully reduce. We hopefully get a solution, okay? Nine and 44. So that's how it works. That's how it finds all combinations on that on that um, plot that I told you, okay? Okay. So here we are doing basically, okay, in our, if you remember this um, Q1, the feasible area, Q1 and Q2, okay, we have our fully open choke. Okay, we are actually just computing every combination that you have here, okay, with choke opening, delta P choke, 1, comma, delta P choke. We are finding every location inside this, this plot. Okay, so if you were, for example, here to simply use, to simply put one choke to zero, right, and then close the other one, you will get this line. And if you do the opposite, put w this one to zero and choke the other one, you will get this line. Okay? In multi dimensions, it gets, you know, out of my league. You have to get a mathematician that can dream on, on this, okay, uh, what happens with high dimension. Okay, now let's go to the second part, which is challenging, okay. So you say, if you have this model, what happens if you want one particular rate, okay, the same case that you had before. You want exactly 80 and you want exactly um, 20, right? Was Okay. For example, here, the option one, I say, I want to get 80 and I want to get 40. That's the model I have. It needs delta P of the choke. How can I use that model to give me exactly these rates? Okay. So let's, let's put that question here. I like to put the notes on the, at least that you know, we know what we are doing. Okay. How to use this model to find 
uh, delta p choke such that q1 will be 80,000 and q2 will be 40,000 right that's the premise that the other case you I did it because you have to for you to understand is easy I think to my opinion to understand this way that you fix the rate and you simply go <coughs> counter current and co-current software doesn't work like that software works like this example that we have done so how do we use this model to get exactly 80 and 40 40,000 we have to have two layers right what I told you you have to have one solver and another solver okay Unfortunately, we cannot do that in Excel. Okay, Excel can have only one level of solver. Okay, but what we can try, okay, we can try. If you remember, we have here one thing called constraint. Okay, right. So we can try to put everything in the same solver. Okay. That's not how commercial software works. It has usually two levels, okay? One solver and another solver, okay? But in our case, let's try to use the same level to so solve everything simultaneously, okay? So let's see. If you see the two levels we had here before, okay, let's repeat again the figure, okay? In Excel, it is not possible to have two levels of solver okay like what we need okay we have okay our network solver okay we have our PR entering here we have our system parameters okay and we have here our delta P choke okay. and then we have this other solver and here we have our Q target okay. and here we calculate the Q calculated and that's what we use for the solver okay so you have here solver 1 that will be my first level solver 1 and this will be solver I'm going to do now in Excel merge these two solvers. Okay, because in, in Excel I can only have one. So I'm going to merge them. And some software uses this approach, not GAP, but some software merge these two problems. Okay? So what it does is merging I'm I'm like merging the two solvers. Okay. That means I have Okay, PR, and then I have here delta P of the choke, okay, and here I have the Q field, okay, and then system parameters, and here I have network and uh, I say. Uh, delta P choke solver and if I merge both then what are <coughs> so what are the objective variable that the junction should be the same right from all locations so P junction Uh, how do we call that equation average minus P junction 1 squared plus P junction average minus P junction 2 squared plus P junction average minus P junction from the separator squared that has to be going to zero right by changing the variables <coughs> What did I have before? Okay.
okay from before I had changing changing PWF1, PWF2 but from the other solver what do I have to change? <coughs> delta P choke 1 and delta P choke 2, right? So now I have two more variables, delta P choke 1 and delta P choke 2, okay? And subjected now, this is what is different to the constraint constraints things that I want my solution to honor, okay? The constraints is that the Q of well 1 should be equal to the Q1 target, okay? And the Q well 2 should be equal to the Q2 target. Okay? So you see, I try to put everything on one solver, and I simply add the constraints variables and constraints of the first solver of the outer solver I put it in the first solver okay so let's try that in our solver we have okay so let's create another sheet okay okay delta p given and here say q target can we say here we have to put the rate someplace? So Q, let's call it here Q target. Okay, what was it? 80,000 and 20,000. Okay, and the delta P of the choke now will be a variable. Okay, will be also a variable that I'm changing, so I change the color. Okay, and now let's modify the, the solver. Okay, solver, solver, please, you have to change. I want to drive this value to zero, okay, or to a minimum, by changing not only these two guys, but I want to change also these two guys, the delta P of the choke. And to do that, I have to add this uh, semicolon, and I have to put these two variables. Okay, so now the solver will be able to change four at the same time. Okay, but the constraint. So yes, these two, they have to be less than PR. Okay, and the next constraint is that this rate has to be exactly equal to this guy. And one more constraint is that <coughs> this guy has to be exactly equal to this guy. Yes? Should we try? I'm not sure it's going to work, okay? I have uh, my doubts. Okay, 60, 33, and 67, 80, and 20. Was that what we got last time? It seems to... 69 and 66. Oh, it was 40,000. Okay, so let's try uh, 40,000. Failed, okay. So PD choke. Let's try 30. Okay. 32, 33 and 32, was that what we got before? 33 and 32, okay? But very challenging. If I change now, for example, the <coughs> rate I change to 30,000, probably I will have to give a better seed, okay? Oh no, it worked, okay. 33 and 52, okay? More or less clear? Okay, that, that's not the way GAP has two solvers, okay? So it has, you know, the network and has the choke. But some other software, they merge both on one big solver, <coughs> okay, one big solver. So.
Okay, so to, uh, on Monday, when you're doing that exercise, I'm not sure maybe the gap part you will reach on Friday, you have to think about this thing, okay, the way the software works. They want to have the delta P and they want to be able to change it to achieve this field rate, okay? Okay. <coughs> yes. Um Yeah, so let's go let's go just very briefly <coughs> this knowledge it's also helpful for, and then we take a, do you prefer to have the break now or um, or we have a discussion like 15 minutes and we take a break? The same? Are you still awake? Still have energy in you? Yeah? Okay. Okay, so we also have these networks down hole, okay? For example, we might have uh, multilateral wells. where we have one wheel and you have these are used I think they're not so much in use now they were quite a lot in previous years but not anymore now mm -hmm. they want to have simpler wheel uh, uh, completion design but they still use many parts in the world because you have it's like you had many wells in one borehole okay so it's it's um, but you have a lot of complexity to be able to to branch it, okay, to be able to get all of these branches. But here you have, you might have the same thing. You have, if you look at the equivalent, okay, how will that look like? You have one common point, and then you have here, that's reservoir pressure, and it will be an IPR for well one, then you have IPR for well two, and maybe they are the same, maybe they are not the same, depending on how is the formation that you are uh, drilling. Okay, so that will be IPR 1, 2, 3, 4, and this might be this pressure here, the commingling point, that might be your PWF. Okay, so there you have to find a solver, you have to solve how much each one is producing. Sometimes they have, um, if they have a choke, okay, let me copy the same figure. Sometimes they have, they call it smart wells, okay? Now, nowadays they call it smart, smart well. And there is a very big fuss and people say it's the best. So they simply come and they say, well, now I can put a choke here. So I can control with this choke. I, I put a hydraulic line, okay, from the top going to that choke. This is a hydraulic line to control the choke okay. and then simply can regulate exactly how much is coming from each layer okay and then this one looks as, uh, slightly different because it gives you more flexibility for example if one branch has too much water then you can close it if one branch has too much gas you can close it also if um, maybe one layer is more productive than the other so it's flowing back so you can choke the more productive layer to produce from the from the other layer. So here you have the choke. Okay, and here you have your PWF, for example. Okay. Um, we can have the same with uh, multi layer wells, not multi branch, but multi layer. For example, we have, and that's very typical in, in in the world, especially also in the US. Okay, so you have one layer, you have another layer, 
and here you have your tubing okay so here you have one flow to that point flow to that point okay so let's call this layer one So if you were going to represent that system, for example, with a line diagram, with a, like a network diagram, you have this PWF1, then you have this IPR, for example, and then you have another PWF, and here you have a tubing equation, okay, you have here a TPR, which is not the full tubing, but just part of the tubing, pipe, part of a pipe. PWF2 IPR2 And here, of course, you have your other tubing, okay, TPR1. Here we can call it TPR1 to 2. Here we call it TPR, uh, TPR of the well, okay? This will be 1 from 1 to 2. No, sorry, from 2 to 1. So you have to solve here in these cases, it might be what you desire usually is that the flow will go like that and go like that and here it goes like that and here it goes like that, right? There might be some cases depending how different the pressure is and the productivity of each layer that you have actually okay, yeah, you have actually maybe this is a very powerful layer, okay? So then you have flow going on this direction and then flow going on this direction. Okay, and then one layer is like charging the other layer. Okay, that can happen. That's that's very important if you have in the network there are differences between wells, there are differences between the layers, there are differences between the tubing. If you have something that is not equal, um, it, it will tend to might you might have this case which is a stealing okay this layer is a st here okay so in the same multi-layer multi-layer with inflow control okay you might have exactly the same you have two layers And there, you don't have, they don't join, but simply you have here somehow this inflow control, okay? And you have here another inflow control. And here you have a packer that is simply impeding the... So it's simply isolating the layer Okay, so this guy is a packer, what we call a packer, and this guy in black is the inflow control, okay? Inflow control. 
and um, so here the flow that's simply like a choke okay so you have fluid coming uh, coming from the layer to the annulus and then passing through that choke and going up okay so if you want we're going to make the line diagram here we have a choke and here we have our IPR and we have um, our PR, PR1, okay, layer 1, layer 2, and we have an IPR of 1, and we have the choke of 1, and then we end up inside the tubing, okay, and then we have from that point we have a tubing, a TPR that will be from 2 to 1, then we have again the same thing, we have a choke then we have the IPR of 2 and then we have the PR2 okay so from here to here we have some sort of an IPR equation just from here to here this will be the PWF now now you have to cross that choke okay and then you end up inside the tubing okay. and then from that tubing going down you have just some pressure losses due to pipe if they have a few hundred meters length and then to go here you have to pass through the choke so this will be your PWF and this is your PWF one okay just like a comment these chokes can be so these chokes let's, let's make here a kind of a these chokes can be um, actuated from surface okay in this case they are very very expensive okay so only if you're a you have your well is really a, a nice producer you afford to you can afford but if you're a poor operator like this uncle in in the US so he will probably won't have the money okay because you have to pass up a cable you have to pass a hydraulic line to connect it here and then you have to pass another hydraulic line to connect it there okay so this is the let's call it here hydraulic lines these two guys here they are hydraulic lines Okay, you know how, you know what is a hydraulic line? <coughs> that you have a piston, right? So you activate the choke, if you have some sort of a choke. Okay, you have a choke and you have some opening that you want, it might look like that, might look different, okay, downhole it looks different. Okay, but here you have this guy which is with a piston okay so you have a hydraulic line and a maybe hydraulic line here so when you want to open okay, let's maybe change the color that's not very good okay so when you want it to close simply you send fluid from one direction okay you send fluid from here and then you have to retrieve fluid from there okay or if you want to open you do the opposite okay you send it on the other direction okay so that's why you have to have this hydraulic line so you control it from surface okay but if you do that then to to uh, to install that thing here it's a it's a pain okay you have to be careful you have to have you have to have a packer that has a hole to put the hydraulic lines okay so it's very expensive and only when you really think this can create a lot of value okay yeah if you want like a more this choke can be actuated from surface or mechanically actuated For example, okay, uh, for example, with 
wire line or coil tubing okay simply you send something inside the well and then you try to change position okay I have I think on my compendium there is an example of that and with that we are going to take soon a break so just hold hold a bit longer on the tubing and in this case you have just two functions okay, if you want to be uh, open okay you simply have to align this part in front of this part okay, if you want it to be closer to you you don't align it okay, and you have some some serious so this part inside is moving yeah. okay it's moving up and down and you have some to lock it in place is this is flexible so it collapses and then it's locking on the next one so if you want to have it open you have to move all of this part up such that it will now lock on the other side I will bring yeah maybe on the break I'm, uh, because I have one in the office so I can just show you uh, how it looks like okay that's how it looks like and that's the process that is a wire line is <coughs> is a wire actually you lower this equipment then um, is going to get this blue part is going to get locked here okay then you can continue lowering down simply because of the weight this is going to come out and you have some uh, wedges that they are going to land on this on the red part and then you simply have to pull it up hammer it up okay and then you're going to change the location from here to here. okay so very complicated tool a lot of technology but this is like a poor boy solution compared to the hydraulic lines. And you can simply, from the surface, you move a valve and then you open and close here. You have to close the well, shut in the well. You have to put a lubricator, okay? You have to open the swap valve and then you have to lower that equipment to shift the sleeve, that's called a sliding sleeve, to shift it up and down. Okay? If you want it to operate as a choke, then you have to have not only one opening, but maybe a smaller opening, okay? So you have fully closed, big opening, and small opening. Okay? <coughs> so this is in page, uh, if you want to see more details, that's in page um, 71 of the compendium. So you say sliding sleeve, functionality, page 71 of compendium okay and there is some description there that uh, you can read if you want uh, but when you have these hydraulic lines you have somehow to be able to push huge okay simply you have to have some hydraulic line that is pushing up and down this red thing okay in in the case of the poor boy solution you have you come inside with a tool and then you uh, move it up and down okay I'm going to put some some drawing of this the different positions <coughs> and also of the tool I think it's important to keep connection with the mechanical side okay we like modeling we're doing a lot of things in Excel paper takes everything but when you go to real life you have to be know how the equipment looks like okay at the end we can do a lot of things on paper with modeling software but we are we are just working with a physical system okay so we have to know a bit how how that system works okay that's a shifting sequence and you
okay so you lower it it simply by its own weight is hanging on a wire so simply it locks here first it gets stuck and then if you continue lowering down simply you are going to push that spring these two things the keys come out okay they're called keys retractable keys and then they are latching on the outside of this red part and then you simply hammer it up okay in the old times simply the guy came and they they just the on the well head okay you have uh, so let's see master valve you have the swap valve and then you have the wing valve okay and here you add the lubricator okay where you have this tool inside that's simply to put inside this tool this let's make it in another color okay that's the tool and here inside is the well okay here we have the tubing okay that's what we call the master valve that's the wing valve and that's what we call the swap which is exactly for this application swap valve okay so we put inside the tool we connect it to a, a, pa a wire okay and then it goes inside there is some small seals that keep you know uh, tight between the cable and then here you have depends on the design but something like that and then you go like that and here you have a person in the old times was a guy you can see some videos on YouTube okay that he simply pulled okay he simply pulled this cable okay then pull it up to bank it up pull it up to bank it up and then finally the sleeve is going to get in location okay A small detour on uh, completion. Do we take a break? Yes? Okay. Let's say 15 minutes. We are back here uh, 11, yeah, 30, 20. Okay. Kind of three hours and yeah, a, lot of, a lot of material. Okay. So let's go for the last stretch. Let's keep it there. I pick it up after do some exercise with the okay that's a, a big tubing okay but that part is connected to the tubing the other part and then the inner part is a sleeve that holds you by by expansion okay so just the last comment on networks and then we go away from networks okay very important for some types of fields uh, you have to know how to compute networks you have to know how to how the commercial software treat networks and what kind of results you can get okay, and why the, the solver can sometimes fail okay. in this case you have long horizontal well uh, in this case that is um, uh, let's say an oil layer you might have an aquifer underlying aquifer you might have a gas cap okay and what you see there if it's very long and the size let's say the rates are high and the size is relatively modest okay you see that the pressure here is actually higher than the pressure here okay because simply you have frictional flow and and you have that profile okay you have flow coming coming in here okay. but if you see what drives that flow actually you have at some point far away you have reservoir pressure okay and then this IPR actually is driven by the difference right between those two pressures so you have here Initially, you have a limited flow, so that will be the Q, will be the flow, okay, towards the wellbore. But here it's becoming increasing, increasing, and increasing, okay, until you have more rate. Because simply the dif pressure differential between reservoir pressure and this pressure inside the, the well it's it's bigger and bigger okay therefore you can have more and more rate okay so let's put here that comment rate rate is a function or is maybe proportional to the difference between pr minus pwf okay and that's why you might have there that could be a problem if you pull too hard or if you're f pushing too hard then you might have this coning okay exactly there at the heel from the uh, the either the gas cap or from either from the aquifer okay you can have this undesired effect 
In this case, I could also use a network, okay, because you see the IPR is actually distributed, okay, so it's like a distributed IPR. Okay, so I could also make some kind of approximation where I make flow in, so this will be wellbore performance. Yeah, and that's there are some tools in the market that do this thing. Okay, and then you have the IPR part and then you have the PR. Okay. Okay, but you can approximate a complex well long that you don't know exactly has a lot of pressure drop along the pipe, you can approximate with such a model. Okay, so here you have like well bore uh, performance relationship. Okay, let's call it well bore. Okay, and here you have the IPR of each section. Okay, and finally you have here the P at the heel. Okay, so it's another way that you can use networks also to calculate flow. Okay, you want to calculate exactly how much each one is producing. Okay, and also to avoid coning, so to avoid this issue, to avoid gas or water coning in flow control device. are often used. Okay. In that case, let's try to make it quickly. Uh, yeah, so you have your oil layer. the gas and the water aquifer then we do the same way that we have done before we put another pipe inside let's see how this goes I always mess up with the dimension <coughs> okay and then you add packers try with a different color Okay, you subdivide, it's like, you know, this, uh, the Romans use divide and conquer, okay, so they try to do the same, to subdivide in, in each problem. Okay, we put packers, okay, and then in each one of these sections, I add an inflow control device. Okay, such that the fluid has, for example, to flow, uh, let's use another color. So it goes inside, then goes through the control device, and then goes inside the pipe. Okay? And the purpose of that is that now my network, it will be, you know, I have PR, then I have this choke. Okay, so, sorry, I have the IPR, then I have this choke. Okay, then I have inside the pipe, then I have the well bore, choke, IPR, PR, okay, and so forth. Okay, let's make only a how oh, one, two, three, four. We have here four, five. One, two, three. here to here, okay, to this region, we have this IPR, 
from here to here we have the choke and then we are inside the tubing here okay. now this section they will be separated by a piece of pipe so you have this wellbore performance okay. then again the same thing you have to go through a choke and then you have to go through that okay. so the reason is that if you if the choke were fully open here okay this pressure is much higher than this pressure so this rate will be very long very very big okay so to compensate for that, you choke it. You increase an artificial pressure drop such that that rate becomes equal to that rate. Okay. So these chokes that are closer to the heel because there is higher, the pressure here is lower. This choke is actually is actually re increasing the pressure drop and then artificially reducing the rate. Okay. So this makes the choke. The choke are used to even, okay, the rate production profile, the rate profile along the way. Okay, I simply have something that is has a very big DP, so I simply try to add artificially another DP, simply to produce the same as the heel. Okay, and then everything will be evenly depleted. You don't have one section which is producing more than the others. Okay. To ensure even depletion, and high recovery factor. Okay, so Let's now go to, uh, I think that will be the last topic for today. So, uh, because next week you're going to work with something called tubing tables. Okay. This is like uh, tubing tables. Let's uh, have a mo small discussion on TPR. Discussion on TPR that if you remember is tubing performance relationship okay. and the first thing is the tubing tables so commercial software are typically used in commercial software So what do, what does it represent? So how do we put it? Um, so the thing is that let's maybe rearrange this. Okay. So in commercial software, instead of uh, running delta p calculations along the tubing each time okay each time is needed okay for example can be uh, flow equilibrium calculation Instead of, in our case, it will be that tubing equation, right? We called it every time. But instead of using it any time, okay, in, in commercial software, instead of running DP calculations along the tubing, each time is needed. Uh, tubing tables, something called tubing tables are used instead. And this means that the delta p at the tubing is pre-computed for uh, as for many operational conditions. Okay, for many operational conditions. Okay, and later interpolation is made on the table.
okay? instead of running the model live. Almost every simulator works in that way. So you remember we had our equation, right, that was the tubing, PWH is equal to PWF squared. <coughs> no, well, let's, let's make it a different way, e to the s minus P WH squared 0.5, and here we have Q, right? Okay, instead of using that equation every time I say I need delta P, I will use that equation. I pre-compute that equation on a, on a table, okay, on what I call a tubing table. So what is the tubing table telling you? So if you had, let's say PWF, right, we have one situation, we have one whale bore, uh, sorry, one whale, Yeah, and we have here PWH and PWF. Again, okay, we have certain Q. Okay. So what I do, I pre-compute with a range of Q and a range of PWF those curves. Again, okay, if you remember, they are going to give you something like that. Right? This is for a fixed PWH 1 okay and you know from that equation it gives you that so I compute those points okay then for another wellhead pressure P wellhead 2 what happens if I reduce the wellhead pressure <coughs> will the curve be above that or below that remember that curve is the pressure available or required, right, at the bottom of the tubing. If I fix this pressure, this pressure is fixed, and therefore, um, if I have no flow, simply will be the hydrostatic, right? Okay. But if I start increasing, then the pressure has to be higher than the hydrostatic to flow against that pressure, right? And it becomes higher and higher and higher. That clear? I know I'm pushing it a bit now for the time, but just bear with me, okay? This pressure is fixed, zero rate, it will be hydrostatic only, and then I start to increase, and then more and more friction losses, okay? Now, what happens if that pressure, I lower that pressure? Let's say before it was 30 bar, and now it's 20 bar. How will the curve look like? Everybody agrees? Yeah? Okay, if I use PWH2, right, where PWH2 is less than PWH1, then I will have a curve that looks maybe like that. Okay, and then I have this curve here. Okay, and if I increase it, okay, the opposite. If I increase it, PWH3, Okay, that will be for PWH3, okay, and here PWH3 okay, so I make computations of all of these points I see there, okay, with that equation, that for gas is simply this equation, but for when we have other cases, for example uh, oil, we have gas with condensate, this equation doesn't hold, okay, so you need another procedure that we will discuss later. But you use that equation and you start from zero all the way to a very high, to a Q max, okay. You subdivide in intervals, okay, so you say PWH equal to PWH1, okay, that will be one table, and then you say the rate here Q1, Q2, Q3, these are all of these Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, Q5. And then I calculate here the PWF required that I need at the bottom of the tubing. PWF 1, 1, PWF 1, sorry, uh, 
that will be for other wheel head pressure make it nicer okay for wheel head pressure one for wheel head pressure two for wheel head pressure three and so forth pwf one two and so forth so I go and I, ru I run with my model all of these possible combinations. This point will be this point. This point will be this point. Okay? Then this point. Okay? Um, this point for all Q, I'm fixing Q and I'm changing PWH. Okay? So it will be this one, this one, and this one. This, this, and this. Okay? I change the Q now and then I have this point, this point, and this point. Okay. Okay, so that's what I call this table here is what I call my tubing table. Okay, this this <laughs> part here. Okay? And that's something that you have to generate because every commercial software doesn't use the equation, doesn't use every time you need this particular combination for this pressure and this rate, it doesn't go and run this. It wants to pre-compute all possibilities of that, all, all the possible rates that I will be able to have, and all possible PWH. And it compiles everything on a table. Why is that? Because simply interpolating here is much faster than running the model. Okay? Simply I just interpolate for any rate that I have, I interpolate and I find the PWH. Okay? So the justification is that interpolation in this table on this table is much more computationally efficient than using using the using the equation the equation and it's simply dry gas is an equation or a method that simply tells me delta p has a function of Q, PWH, okay. some things. So how will you use that table now, I ask you, to find flow equilibrium? Okay, you have IPR. Okay. PWF and Q, and also actually Prosper also use a series of points for the IPR. So this, this guy, let's change the color and with that we close our session okay this color is the IPR I have a series of points where I have interpolation okay okay and how do I find now the equilibrium for PWH um, equal for example PWH 1 okay so then I come I overlap this other curve that I have okay so from the t from the table, let's let's make it sorry let's make a bit longer even if it takes longer time. So it's your task is task is to find equilibrium for PWH equal to PWH one. Okay. So that's your task. Okay. So then you go, go to tubing table and extract the column PWH equal to PWH1. 
okay? In my case, I just go to that table that I have pre-computed and I hope that number is there, okay? So I just take that column, okay? And impose on the plot, on the plot, okay? And that will give me this curve, okay? And then I simply find that intersection by interpolation, okay? Simply have two straight lines here, I find where the difference between these pressures become negative, okay? I have different rates, so I say when will it become negative? I have the intersection here and I find simply the intersection of two straight lines, okay? You simply have to go for each Q, say, is that pressure greater than that? No. That pressure greater than that? Yes. That pressure greater than that? Yes. Here, it changed sign, okay? For this rate, then it will be different signs. So I just say, these are my two X2. I have two lines here. Okay, so this will be PWF1 from the IPR. This will be PWF2 from the IPR. Okay, and this will be PWF1 from the TPR and this will be PWF2 from the TPR okay I see where I have a change in sign okay and then I come and say so how do I find that intersection okay I have to make a point here which is the intersection PWF star for a Q star, and here I have Q1, and here I have Q2, right? So I have to say the first equation is PWF1 from IPR minus PWF2 from IPR divided by Q1 minus Q2 will be equal to PWF1 IPR minus minus Q star, okay? So I have one equation with two unknowns, and I have the second equation is the PWF from TPR, one from the TPR, minus PWF two from the TPR, divided by Q1 minus Q2, okay? That will be PWF one from the TPR, minus PWF star, divided by Q1, So I make the line equation here between these two points, that's this equation, and I make the line equation here between these two points, okay? That's that equation, and then I say intersect those two, okay? They have to intersect at one common PWF and one common IQ. Two system of equations with two unknowns, I can, I can solve it very efficiently, okay? So just a comment for when you next week, you go and see the tubing table, basically I pre-compute all of those points, I put them on a table in this format, and then when I want to make the intersection, I don't use equation anymore. I simply use interpolation on table, okay? intersection of, of linear um, uh, equations. Yes, uh, do you have any question, burning question you want to ask before we close? No? Okay. So we, uh, let's see. We had network, okay? We finalized with network all kind of options to calculate network, giving choke, giving rate, uh, giving both choke and rate. Then I told you networks can also be useful for many other things. And then lastly, we said, talk about a bit about tubing table. What does it mean? We are pre computing the equation and we're using that in the commercial software. We're just simply using these points. We don't use the, the equation, we actually use the points. Next week we have this tutorial on, will be on Monday and Friday in this computer lab. And also we have on Monday, there will be a lady from Equinor. She's going to talk about hybrid, okay? Last year was very nice, was like a, almost like a lecture. So really I encourage you if you have the time to 
to attend the lecture. Okay? We close. Uh, have a nice weekend. I'll see you next week. Thank <laughs> you.